Today's clip is a bit of a mix match of miscellaneous tasks that need to be completed before we can move to finishing up the engine and putting it back in the car. Alrighty, so we've got some good news to start. So I know when I did some basic reading on terms of actually doing a conversion for this car that some lines, like some parts are pre-existing with the auto to manual. So like stuff that's on the automatic car, they will have parts for manual. And this is great because I was trying to figure out, I've got the clutch hard line with me on the floor and I've been trying to work out where it would go thinking, oh, it must sort of go coincide with I think this is the little brake line, and it does. So these, you probably won't be able to see, but this bolt that connects this brake line, there's actually a second loop up here that, I'm, that I assume that the manual line goes through, and then I was looking at the clutch hard lines, and they actually have these identical clips, the guy's given me them, and the hard line is on the top notch. So that's correct, so that means all I need to do, which makes life a lot easier, is attach the manual line to the top of these, and then work out from there well, it's actually good as well because I can figure out what way is front and what way is back. And then figure out from there how do we going to loop it to the front of the car and to the rear of the car. So that makes life hella easy. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to handheld this, so I apologize for the shakiness. But, um... You didn't miss much. You missed about an hour and a half of me screaming very bad words and bashing my hand quite aggressively up on the side in frustration. And I'm pretty sure I've done something to my thumb because it is in searing pain. But we have the brake line. Is this one at the bottom? Yep. And then this is the clutch line at the top. Um, so the problem with this, and I ended up having to remove some bits um, so I had to remove the, there's a brace that comes along here, um, it's just chilling here. So I had to remove that because I wanted to see what was going on. But basically, so this is the, some water lines. Um, these, these hoses are brittle as heck, you probably hear it crunching. Um, so they're going to need to get replaced at some point. But there's a 10 mil up there and there's also a 10 mil here. I removed those to give it a bit more flex and it did absolutely nothing, so I don't recommend you do that. And so the next thing I removed was, oh, I loosened this one for the AC just to give it a bit more flex. And surprise, surprise, that did absolutely nothing. And then I removed this here, which was another 10 for the coolant line. And it gave it a bit of flex, so it did kind of help. Um, and then what I did, so this is the clutch hose here, which I need to um, like actually bolted on but that's that's it there so I had to feed it up through here aggressively you can see some of the markings I left behind very angrily and some scratches down there um, and eventually kind of twist it around and get it through here and then feed it through now this line actually sits behind the brake line as it goes around which I don't know if you can see and then it sort of tapers up and then it was kind of easy from there just trailing it down so hooked up to that one and then we got down to this hose here where we got it clamped up I had to rejiggle it a bit um, the clutch line isn't the correct like isn't isn't quite bent correctly so yeah I had to sort of bend it around a bit to kind of get it to fit and then move down here did the same thing um, so these were the bits I was talking about where they came with a double kind of hoop so I just fit them they all the clutch ones fit on the I think it was the top the top line is the which was good. We, oh, I just whacked myself on the stand and then we moved down here and this one also needed a bit of faffing to get it to fit. Um, but it did, it did eventually fit. And now it's just sort of sitting over and goes out. I don't know if the camera can see, but sits out there. I don't know where it connects to the gearbox, but yeah, we've got clutch hard lines in now. Basically the, uh, the conversion is complete. The car is now manual. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, tune in next week where I don't do anything with this car because this car is complete. It's done. It's done. It's fully It's fully done. It's been EV swapped. It doesn't need petrol anymore. Yeah, it's an EV manual. They exist. So we're top side of the car and we're now going to figure out where the thing is. I'm really tired. The, there's a rubber bung where the brake line comes up from. So we're going to figure out where that... That'll be it right there. Found it. <laughs> this is the new piece. Uh, that's the bung. So John's just confirmed this is the part that, I'll just cut it down. That is the part that goes down on the car. And then this 
bit here goes to the um, booster yeah. thingamadoodle, what the fuck it's called. Alrighty, so another morning, another day working on the MR2. Uh, today we are hoping we're going to get the motor Whoop. and stick it in here. Before we do that, we need to just replace all of the auxiliaries, uh, put the supercharger on, all the other little bits and bobs before we then try and dump it in the car. I'm currently in the engine bay because before we do that, we got to just tidy up some bits. So when I dropped the motor, I did scuff and dent some areas. So there's a bit of exposed metal. So I'm going to be painting, masking up and painting these areas just up a bit. Um, and just do a quick look around the car just to make sure that any parts that are exposed are covered up because the last thing I want to do is chase rust in like another 20 years time. Just a cheap and nasty but it will just keep the rust from getting in. It's bubbly because I don't know how to spray shit for my life. We actually have some more updates with the MR2 Heaven handbrake cables, so I've decided I'll just make a separate video to come out shortly, just to fully de- What I've just done down here is I've removed the brake lines again, and um, we've had a chat with MR2 Heaven and we're just going to be measuring up the lines because they've come back and confirmed that the brake lines shouldn't have looked the way they did with the weird kinks and things on the car. So I'm just, uh, I've removed the lines and I've just realised that the AC lines here which I hope I haven't broken, they're pretty heavily bent at the end. <laughs> um, but these lines, I'm pretty sure they actually go um, on top of these two units. You'll see, I don't know, well, you might be able to see, but there's like a little hook here, and I'm pretty sure it loops into that. Well, we're finally done. I stopped recording pretty early in because I just started getting really emotional and angry and like borderline gonna grumpy cry. <laughs> but we've got this um, like hose for the fuel tank in. They're not they're not secured yet. I'll do that shortly. Securing is obviously just two Phillips. We've got a Phillips on this side and then down there. You might be able to see my finger on another one. So I've arranged it so that I can eventually have it sitting vertically down because so, there's, there's some holes underneath that I can stick a, a Phillips, just a long Phillips and then tighten that. So that's what I've done there. This, I, I don't know like how easy or hard it is for most people to get these units loose, but I ended up having to remove this pipe here, which connects to this, so this hard line. There's oil that comes out of this. I don't know if that's, maybe something wrong with my car. Um, and then I had to loosen this. The like entry to the tank is wobbling now, so I don't know if I've like busted something or maybe now that I bolted it back in place it'll be okay. But I had to loosen it, so that was just 14 mils, so well, six including these um these nuts. So there's one on the side, one on the other side that I had to remove to drop this unit, and then 14 mils, one down there, one up here which connects to the fuel filter, so I have to remove that again. 
and then one there, and then there's another one down there. You have to remove these to get into the bolt. Well, if you had a flexi joint, you'd probably be all right getting them, but I, I couldn't. I ended up like beginning to round them, so I just removed that piece. But yeah, so the fuel system, except for this, which I'm going to put in, is pretty much all plumbed in now. Uh, the hard line, if you're doing a manual conversion, when you route the hard lines, I've had to remove this hose as well um, because I had that, this hard line sitting over the top of the hose. Um, I was just having a chat with a couple of guys with manual ones and this hard line is supposed to be underneath the hoses. So I've just bent it down out of the way. I still don't know where it's gonna connect to the gearbox, but I'm hoping that it's in this kind of direction that I don't have to bend it too much. Um, so John's just off getting a new pipe because this one was really crunchy. Uh, yeah. Once that's all together, I can start cleaning the engine bay, which is going to be, hide my head, really, really nice. So we're pretty much done with reassembling the fuel system. All this plumbing and stuff, that's really going to happen just once the motor's ready to come in, which won't be this episode, but it will probably be the next one. Um, I'm still not sure as to the order of things. It's going to be tomorrow for me, most likely. Um, but there might be delays. I mean, we're sort of falling a bit behind with our little schedule anyway, so it may be a few days after today, which means maybe there's another episode that'll pop up after this. But yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment. So yeah, I'll just tidy up some more. I know this video's come out a bit messily and it's probably not what people want to see, but the next few clips are absolute monsters. So I just wanted to compile all the smaller jobs into one before going into the bigger stuff. We are finally seeing the end of this project. So thank you guys so much for following so far. Honestly, I am so ready to finish up this little MR2 and begin working on all the other projects like my NSR that has been neglected for the last few months and more stuff on the FD as well coming soon. So yeah, I'll see you guys next week where I'll be tackling the brake booster and pedals.